Uh, okay, so my talk is about how to refactor like a boss. So my name is Michael. I'm, I'm uh, Kodo Kung Fu on Twitter. Um, before I continue, if any of you is on Twitter, um, I am preparing for this year's uh, PHP Conf. So use this hashtag, come to Asia, at, at, at mention me, and mention anyone else, anyone you would like to invite to come for this year's PHP Conf. Any VIB or VVIP that you want them to come to Singapore, right? <laughs> so uh, this is your mission by the end of the night. Uh, when you're done, show me the tweet and I will give you a free t-shirt. Wow. <laughs> How about that? Okay. Yeah, so I mentioned somebody you know, on the PHP world that you really like to see in Singapore, uh, you know, and put this hashtag come to Asia uh, and at, at, at mention us at, at, uh, at PHP Conf Asia. And then uh, show me the tweet, I'll give you a free t-shirt. Unfortunately, you're only left with 2XL and a small size, so... You should have told them that. <laughs> I can't lie. No, that's not lying. That's not telling Fine, you forget it. Go away. <laughs> anyway, so uh, uh, what is ref I'll talk about a couple of things. So I'll talk about what is refactoring and why we, we do refactoring. And I'll share with you some common refactoring techniques that, uh, that I, I have personally used in uh, at least for this sample code, as I'm showing you later, I have to use the same that exact uh, 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 refactoring techniques. Is the font big? Is the font big enough? You guys, can you guys see? Can I? Okay, cool. So why what is refactoring? Or why do we do it? Um, the H O uh, wisdom is that when software is left alone, it will decay, right? Because the use cases will change. And your software, if you don't refactor it or change it, you end up having very uh, expired software, P software that can't, that is no longer useful. So we, we refactor so that it makes it easier for us to, well, we refactor code because we don't want our code to, to decay, right? We want it to continue to be relevant. So it usually is a change uh, made to the internal structure of your software that makes it easier to understand, right? So when you refactor code, you want the, the code to read uh, naturally. So we look at the different functions, it should communicate intent. What do you write the bloody function for, right? And also, un, un, for business people here, you, you, this should be very good for you because when you refactor code, so this is how you explain to your boss, okay? I refactor code so that it's cheaper for us to change in the future, right? Why is it cheaper? Because you, if you don't refactor your code, you go back and you're like, wait, what did I write two months ago? <laughs> You have to re spend time reading your code again. If, it's, if you don't remember or you forgot your comments or your, God forbid, your comments are outdated, <laughs> you're like, shit, what is this ready for? Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, it makes it cheaper, right? Because when you refactor your code in a way that's readable, it makes it easier to understand by glancing at it, uh, like looking through your function names or whatnot. They communicate intent. Once it communicates intent, it's easier for you to read it and understand it. And then all the muscle memory comes back and you start coding away. Yeah. Ideal, ideal situation. La. But and when you refactor a code, uh, it, it shouldn't change the observable behavior of your code, right? So your software is written to do, to do certain things, and when you refactor, we make changes, make it readable, make it you know uh, cheaper to make changes in the future, but it shouldn't change the, the behavior. You should still do the same thing. And you should also, in doing so, you will improve the design of your code. When you improve the, desi improve the design, you also read easier and it makes it easier to refactor and change and you add new features, right? Um, and having tests actually helps a lot because having test coverage in your code will help you ensure that you have not actually changed the behavior of your code. How many times have you actually written like code and then, wait, it wasn't supposed to do that, <laughs> right? Wait, what did I change? Uh, you know, so you have, when you have tests, it gives you immediate feedback that, look, you have actually made a breaking change somewhere and this test will tell you, the test has proven to you that you have, especially when you have a very big software or legacy code, how many of you guys are still maintaining legacy software like from PHP 3 or PHP 4 days, right? Yeah, or maybe code you, that you inherited from a predecessor. I'm sure there's many of you guys here, right? Um, so, because I want uh, our meetups to be practical, I'm gonna share with you some practical tips because I like being practical. So there are four things I'll be sharing. Number one will be, how do you change names 
you should okay to, for, for the, the techniques you should have is uh, change the names that communicate intent remove any of the magic numbers because those are scary um, one responsibility per function or class that will be this should be it should be common sense but actually it's not um, and last thing is do not be obsessed with primitives primitives like arrays strings and all that stuff I'll, I'll go into more detail when I touch that right so the first one is about refactoring techniques number one change names to communicate intent how many of you have seen mystery variables like a B <laughs> <laughs> What does A and B stand for, right? So, so how do you change them to give it meaning? You look at the implementation and you look at the, the data it contains. Some usually you look at the data, you're like, okay, this is somebody's name. So why is that? So it's also somebody's name. Usually you, you should just mean first name and last name. Right? You name your variables in a way that it communicates meaning and what it's supposed to be used for and where, is it, where will be, how you'll be used. You have, you communicate the intent, it's easy for you to glance at it and, and figure out what it is. Otherwise, you have to look at all the implementations that actually use it, or you have to look at the data that it contains to actually find out the, figure out what, you use, what it's used for, right? So, which is, yeah, don't do that. Mystery functions. How, have you, how many of you have actually seen mystery functions? What is foo? <laughs> right? So, foo takes two arguments. So, what does it give you? It spews out a greeting. Okay, so why is this mystery function? Why is foo? What does it stand for? And what should we, what, how should we rename it to give it meaning? Any guesses? Any guesses? Say hello. You greet somebody. Yeah, so it's a greeting. So greeting from first name, last name. Yeah. Some of my examples are very contrived, but you know, you get the picture, right? Okay, so change names to communicate intent. An extension to that is about magic numbers, right? Suddenly you find in your code a mystery number, like what the hell is this 1.4, right? What the hell is that, right? So amount in USD, you pass in an amount and then you have 1.4 inside, it's like, what does that mean, man? Look at the function, you may probably get, 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 have a guess, you know, what does this 1.4 means? Probably means exchange rate, maybe, Ask around, ask your colleague, hey, what is this 1.4? You check the git, your git log, oh yeah, okay, this guy, hey, what is this 1.4? Oh yeah, okay, fine. So what do you do? You, you refactor it, you change it to something meaningful, right? It has to be, yes, the thing has a community com intent, right? So you change it with a constant, you define it, and then you can use it in your code, right? Also, same applies in a class. You can also lift it up into a constant, right? A class constant like this, so you can just use it in your class as well. So. Right, so when you find a mystery number, I will, you know, one of the, even, even Ruby is do this, right? A previous project I was in, they had mystery numbers floating all over the Ruby, the Rails uh, code. I was like, guys, what the fuck is this? <laughs> so, yeah. What currency is the input in? Sorry? What currency is the input in Singapore in this I assume it's Singapore dollars. Again, ah, see, see, <laughs> see. Another opportunity to refactor. <laughs> Doing it, you should be dividing it, not multiplying it. <laughs> See, no, no test. Sorry, I did, I forgot to write test. See, writing test make sure you don't change behavior. I'm such a failure here. <laughs> anyway, so that's two fa two tips down. So the third the third technique that we use is usually when we refactor code, uh, we try to bring all. We will try to write your functions such that each function only has one responsibility. As in, it takes in certain things, it only, it only does one thing and gives you the result that you need, right? Um, so with this, I'll, I'll change it out a little bit. I'll use an example, right? An example of, uh, say, a club membership register. Like, say, you run a, a country club. Maybe not a country club, but some, some club, right? And you're kind of like a software guy there. You're, you're tasked to maintain your club membership register as a CSV file, right? So yeah, like you know, something like this, you know. Uh, Luke Skywalker is a good friend of mine, you know. Yeah. So we have this as CSV file, and your manager comes to you and say, Hey, look, why don't you come up with a PHP script that kind of manages the registry? Uh, and this is the feature story, right? So if you you do agile like like I do, 
they usually ask, so where is the feature story? So you file a report in Pivotal Tracker or Feature Story, and this is the description. I want to add new members to the end of the file, and if the email is already in the list, ignore the new entry. So basically, if it's new, if it's never been there, add it in. Otherwise, if it's the email is already there, omit it or ignore it and don't throw anything or throw whatever. It's just say ignore it. Don't, don't insert into the, into the file. Simple enough, right? So you go away there. All right, let's do this. You put, you open up, you fire up your PHP uh, storm and start coding away. And lo and behold, you got a piece of code that does exactly that. So you have the uh, first line, you just, it opens up opens up the, the CSV file, right? Open up in read-only mode, read plus, which uh, the plus means you can also uh, append to it. Uh, and then you say, okay, loop through, find if this guy is the same email as the guy, you, you return false, otherwise you, you put it in and you're done, right? So you pass in an array like this and returns true or false, somewhere along that line. Simple enough, right? Anyone can write this, right? Right? <laughs> okay. Okay, so what is, yeah, so it works. Oh, yeah. Um, but here's a question. How many things do you think this ad member is doing? How many things? Let's have a look again. How many things do you think is doing? He's opening the file. He's checking for the whatever. I don't know why it's, why it's, why it's in position two. Um, and if it's, it kind of throws a returns a false, otherwise it, it, it injects in the new uh, CSV field, right? Four things, four things this thing is doing, right? Open the CSV, check for duplicate emails, ignores if it's already there, and adds if it's, if it's not there. So it's kind of like, there's a lot of things for one function to do, right? Um, of course, if you are rushed for time, you probably just walk away and say, it works, I'm not gonna care about this. But for me, I, it, it irks me that when I read back this, when this file, right? What does it even mean? Why is, why is this position number two, right? It's like, huh? <laughs> right? So, the only, only thing here that makes sense is the, is the function name, like add member, okay? It's doing add member, but you know, it's doing quite a few other things, right? So, it is disconcerting. It's doing too much, right? Ideally, each function should only have one functionality, as in it only has one responsibility. It should only do one thing. So these four things that it's doing, we should probably try and break it up, maybe? And if you look at the code, it's not very readable, right? So, I mean, if you can sense and you can feel your eyes twitching and whatnot, you are in the right company. Because we all are craftsmen, we want to see things that, we want to build things that uh, that we can be proud of, right? And if you are twitching, uh, like I, I was when I was looking, uh, when I wrote that code, I feel very dirty. But uh, anyway, so let's go on to this. So what, if you come back to this same piece of code two months later, you still, it confuses you. What the hell is this? You know, so, so what should you do? As I said, you should probably abstract away the details, in, uh, uh, implementation details into feed, separate functions. Like opening a file, closing a file, writing to it. These are all implementation details. What do we want to do? We want to check. We want to ch add a new member into the list. But to do that, we need to do other things first, which means get the current list, do other this, do that. These are things we want to do. How we implement it, that's why we write functions. We hide it inside a function, right? So we ask ourselves what if questions. What if we come back and we say, I want to also check for something else. Then you, you'll be kind of like, oh, shit, yeah. So if you will have to make changes to the same piece of code, it'll be very frustrating. And, you, and if, you, if, you, if you come, if the worst response you can give to your manager when he asks you to make changes is, it's not meant to do that. <laughs> That's not an acceptable answer. So four, uh, so what do you do? Step one, you identify, you identify the different behaviors. So first of all, when you open the file, what do you, what do you do when you open the file? You basically get it pulling together the list of members, the current list of members. You also identify that, uh, how do you check email? I, I don't, it's not about email, right? It's about checking whether that, that person is already in the list. That is, what you're, that is the behavior that you need to abstract. This is the behavior that you need. 
checking for email address is just an implementation detail, right? You are concerned with whether this person is in the list. Ignore if it's already there, it's kind of like a reverse of the two, right? It's just a result that you get from, uh, from checking if a member is already in the list. And number four is, add if it's not, so no, it's just about adding a new member to the list. You're just adding it in. Because I already know, I checked it in, in the previous step, I'm just adding it in. I'm not going to check whether it is not in the list or whatever. I'm just going to do something that injects a new person into the list, right? So these are you've broken it down to maybe three separate functions, three separate behaviors that you want to kind of maybe extract out, right? So next thing you do is you you keep the function as it is. So as the refactoring step, you don't change the current the actual implementation, but you try to pull out the stuff that you think is trying to do. So you break it into separate functions, right? So the things that it's trying to do, maybe you pull out, or we call it extract, you extract out the get list of members into a function, right? So the, the, act, the act of opening the file, reading every single piece of record inside there, and maybe pushing it into an array, right? And then just returning it, right? I'm, not, I'm sure there are some CSV libraries out there that can do this, but I'm using just uh, core PHP functions right now. So I have implemented something that does just one thing. A function that just gives you, what does it give you? Yes. List of members, that's correct. So that's all I need to know, right? You can write tests around this right now. You can write a test that says, I have this given this file, I should get like five records because I have a CSV fixture that gives me a fixture file which gives you five, has five records inside, right? Maybe, right? So it's how you could write a test that they're very, they're very so a test is, for when you test a function that only does one thing, it's very easy. Your test is only one short block. Whereas if you're testing the earlier function, you're writing a test, you're like, oh no, you gotta check for this, you gotta check for that, you gotta check what if it's not there, and you end up with a very long test. So breaking it up into smaller functions also help you write smaller tests, which is more readable. So first, we extract the get list of members, which is basically opening file, blah, 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 and give you the array, just give you an array. Second thing you do is extract the check if member is already in the list. So assume imaginary, my imaginary function, which I actually just wrote, gives me an array of, use, of members. And then I assume my, I create a new function right now that kind of checks whether this person is already in the list. I don't really care what is inside this new member. I just know I'm passing in a new member object. Or in this case, it's just an just a, a array array with some, some data inside, right? So whatever the main function gets, I pass to this, and I also, from another function where I get the full list of members, I also pass to this. So this function only needs to know two things. It needs to know what is the existing list of member, and, and the new member I'm trying to add, right? So there are two things it needs to know, and from these two, it can basically uh, compute the implementation of computing whether this guy is in the list is a mystery. It's an implementation detail, which your boss will probably want to tell you. But in your function, in this one function, right, you, you, you wrap your implementation inside this one function, which does one thing only. What does this function do? Check whether that person is in your list. So it gets, takes in two arguments, blah, 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 it runs through it. Because it's an array which I'm not sure why I'm using number two, but somehow the guy who passed me the CSV file had the email address at the, as the third, as the third uh, column, right? So I put a little comment there lah, because I'm kind of like, this is the email, email view, okay? Yeah. So basically, it just takes the list, loops through it, and basically compares and finds that if it's already in the list, I'll just return false, an early return. Uh, and then return, return true if, sorry, it returns true if it's in the list, otherwise it returns false, which means it's not in the list, right? So naming of the function is also very, very handy because when you look at this function name, right, what does this communicate? Can you? It, yeah, it, it also tells you what kind of, it kind of suggests to you what kind of data it returns, right? Looking at the function name, the is, uh, the is in front is kind of like, Kind of how we have is is now you know is a you know so it's kind of like also giving you suggesting to you that the return uh, the return data is a boolean, correct? 
Yeah, so that's unfortunately we kind of have question mark in the function name, lah. So you know, uh, it's like, you know, it's just another whole other story. So we 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 hint we hint to the person uh, using this with the function name, and we uh, prefix it with is is. And third thing is, um, we take the add new member to the list. We also break it up into separate functions. Implementation is very simple. Just take whatever is uh, take the new user, just insert it into the file, right? Of course, if you look at this one again, you say add member to file. What file are we talking about? Maybe I could refactor this to also include the file name I'm actually injecting it to, uh, because but you know um, that could be a future refactor. On the hindsight, probably I should have put the file name <laughs> as one of the arguments. But anyway, just separate separate discussion. So now you have three functions that that actually basically does the three behaviors that we talked about, right? First is it retrieves the full list of members. It, the second one basically checks whether this person is in the list, and then the third function is basically just inserting it into the into the file. Three separate functions that do three discrete things. So one, two, three, and each other has one responsibility. So once we have that, we call, we go back to our main function add member. We open it up and say, hmm, let's refactor. So we take the new functions that we have and we just in, we just inject it in here. So for example, get members is the first one we wrote. It gives you the list of members, and we pass it into a local, into a local variable. Then we also make this return, uh, we also make this check something. Like, is, it, is this member in the list? If it returns true, our, our, it, ret it returns true when the user is actually in the, already in the list, and I'll return false to the whole thing. I'll say I will not inject this person, I will not add this member. If it's, so I'll return early here, but if it's not in the list, I'll just add the member to the list and I'm done. Right? And then implementation, the implementation re remains the same, or rather the usage, re the usage remains the same, I'm just passing in an array. And I, didn't, I have not, did I change, so question to, I ask of you is, do, did I change the behavior of this function? No, right? The function remains the same. So when you do refactoring, uh, only focus on uh, code that doesn't change behavior. Changing behavior, changing the, sorry, uh, make changes that doesn't change your API. Basically, your function, how it is used, don't try not to change it. Your behavior of your code, try not to change it, but internally, the internal structure, just remodel, rejig it around to make it more readable and cheaper to make changes in the future. Because, yeah, so see, from a, Long function, I refactor, and then this function is now so readable. It's just like how many lines? One, two, three, four, five, five lines of code. That like, wow, so nice. Um, and it reads like English, right? First, you get the member. Is member in the list? If it is, return false. Otherwise, you add to, you add, to add to the file. It, from just reading this, you kind of understand immediately. Oh, more or less immediately, you understand what is this function? How is how is this function implemented, right? The implementation detail is somewhat obvious to you because it shows you the behavior. But then the implementation detail, you have to drill down further to actually see what's going on, right? But again, that's like, the, so the implementation detail is, is abstracted away in a different function that you can just dig in and see, you can see. So we're happy, the function works, your boss is happy, yay. Then after two months, he comes to you again and say, oh boy, I cannot. <laughs> So it tells you that oh, we're getting too many, too many duplicates in the list because you know I want you to check the name also. I want you to check that the name is not already in the list. If it is, then you know ignore it because currently we have any all all being duplicated in the list, so it's very very stressful. So he yeah one stressful boss got three little um, stressful faces. So people with the same name are with different email addresses are also being added to the list. So they want to prevent this in the future. So this is the what his feature change actually means. So it's the bug that he has found. So let's look at the code change. So this is, um, from here on, I'll show you the example of how we have, since we have refactored the code two months before, we look at it again with fresh eyes. We have not seen the code in two months. Uh, again, we look at the function and we can quickly look and we basically extracted out the main function that is displayed in, uh, in that file, right? I can show you the file as well, if you want. 
Um, so the file is uh, line refactored. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So the refactor file is here. So if I do a sh uh, command shift minus, it basically collapses to all the function names. So first of all, it gets get member is member in list, add member to file, and then finally the add member function, which actually does the actual implementation. Right, so uh, looking at just the function names, can you kind of guess where should I make the code change? It's member in list. It's member in list. Why are you guys so smart? Huh? <laughs> awesome. Okay, so from this, so where do you think you should make a code change? We have identified it as member in list. It's pretty much where we need you to make a code change. This is where uh, this is actually being used because if it's not returning the right uh, response, it would basically let the let the let the let it go through, and you basically you know. So we need to check the full, full name here. So this is the original function that we have seen. So we have one command there that says "oh email field." Got it. So there's something else in here. So you can do a var dump inside and run, run a couple of things. Why is it, oh why is in this array? Ah okay, the array uh, the position one is. Position zero is the first name. Position one is uh, so the first column is first name. Second column is the last name, right? So this is kind of like where we, we need to make a change. So this is a re with this re reimplemented code. In the ideal situation, you also have test. You also have test for this function. So you have to go back and write and change your test to say now this test I want to also I inject someone with the I pass it someone with the same name. It should throw uh, false. Basically, it shouldn't add to the thing, right? But for 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 the for the sake of time, uh, I will not show you any tests because I didn't write any tests, and <laughs> I'm a bad example. But we'll we'll see. <laughs> so here we have uh, it's checking. So it's a bit different. The the behavior is be, the behavior in this code change is a bit different from the email because email is just one field, right? So just is it equal with with the first name last name. You also want to check that it's actually you know if it's not first and last, it's actually not exactly the same. Then you do something else. So the implementation is a bit different, but again, these are all implementation details, right? Your function communicates an intent. Your intent is to not is to check whether this guy is in the list. And the way I check the, the check make the comparison is the implementation detail, which is email. And now we have added new uh, username. In an, also, in a further ideal situation, you may also want to extract out these two things here. I can foresee that if we have more fields in the database, uh, in the CSV file, you probably this function will probably grow, right? So maybe it's also good to maybe take this opportunity to refactor a little bit, maybe create a new function that says is email there or like is is uh, uh, is named the same or something like that, right? Uh, so you could more functions that you can extract from this. Uh, why and why do we do that? Well, why do we refactor? Make it cheaper to make changes in the future. <laughs> and more readable, of course. Uh, and also get paid, la, yeah. <laughs> see, see, for, for freelancers, it's actually a good thing, right? When you refactor your code, when your customer comes to you and say, I want to do this, oh, it's going to take a long time. And then you charge them extra, they actually can do it just one day. <laughs> Not really, but yeah. You get what I mean, right? You get what I mean, right? Because developer happiness is important to me, to everyone, right? <laughs> okay. So what have we learned from looking at this uh, whole example today? Um, readable code for the win! So we like code that are readable. That reads like English. Somewhat like English. <laughs> right? And we also learned how to break up a long function into separate functions. And each one with its own responsibility. Just one is responsibility per, per function. And also makes future code changes easier to make because, you know, we have Broken it up, it's logical logical pieces of the puzzle that we can just poke and change if we need to make changes, right? It's not like one huge function that, oh no, legacy code, if I make two lines of change here, will I break everything, you know, kind of thing, so it's scary. Yeah, so refactoring of code is important and um, it's also important that you don't make changes that affect your API. Your current, fun your current implementation of a code shouldn't be affected. So, that's technique number three. That's technique number four. Refactoring. So do not be obsessed with primitives. Why is this? Akan datang. Next month we'll talk about this. <laughs> okay, so I'll, I'll share with you a bit more about this next month. 
Um, meanwhile, the sample codes are actually up there. You can just take a picture of this, understand this, whatever. So it's uh, GitHub, uh, github.com, Code Kung Fu, refactoring PHP demo. Um, if you peek into the code right now, you actually see the, yeah, the slides already up there. <laughs> right. And um, that's all I have. Any questions? That's all I have for this week. Right, so next month, we have, we'll talk about the last, last refactoring technique. Really, no question? Ah? I just want to add one point to that. Yeah. So one of my mentors early in my uh, career taught me that every time you copy paste code, think of refactoring. Yeah. So every time you copy a 50 line code from one place to another place, try and understand if this should now become a function <coughs> and extract it out if you can. Uh, because often people don't do it. Uh, so just wanted to add that as well. Yeah. That one of the reasons you should refactor is to avoid, you know, copy pasted code or rewritten code all, all yeah. over the place. Because if you find bug in one place, you end up fixing them at six places. Yeah. Or you actually fix it only one place, and the bug still remains, and then yeah. So you if you have to ever have a copy paste code, you know that's a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, but. Because when it's also an opportunity. Because we do a copy and pasting code, it means the car tells you that these two places where you copy and pasting code, there's some similar behavior. And there's an opportunity when you look at these two code and say, what are the similarities and what are the differences? So once you figure out what are the similarities, you can pull them out into a main function. And then you can take all the differences and implement it separately differently. Right? So that's an opportunity. You will see copy pasting of code uh, it's an opportunity for you to find out where are the similarities and what are the differences and you know stuff like that. Thanks. Any other questions or comments? Yeah. The refactoring that you just did earlier, if the file had like million entries, the code will still work because nothing was loaded in memory. But after the refactoring, you're bringing everything into memory; it won't work after you have million oh. entries. Um, maybe, maybe I might break. It probably might probably break, uh, but uh, I, there's someone. Someone did tell me this before, right? Um, uh, a friend, uh, a friend of mine once said that performance code is usually never pretty. Yes. Right. A very performant piece of code is never pretty. So, uh, so somehow, and sometimes it's a balance between pretty code. And performance code, right? Or code that reads well and, and you can understand and change easily, or code that performs very well for that moment or for the thing that you need it for. But I personally would, would put more emphasis on making code that is readable because eventually you, you'll be the one that has to maintain it. Of course, performance code that is also readable, that's like the holy grail. Uh, um, um, and sometimes it's a balance uh, finding out which is what it, what it is. And of course, to that question, well, why am I using CSV? Because it's easy. Of course, if you want to think, look at look at in more detail, you probably want to re-implement it as a database, uh, my MySQL to make it more uh, easy to manage, um, performant. Uh, uh, that will be something I actually will talk about next month. My clients. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, any other questions? No. Great, so that's all I have, and thank you. Um, so next we have...